I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today well, we're right by the beach but I'll explain that very shortly. We're at uh, Abbotsbury in Dorset which is about seven miles to the uh, southwest of uh, Dorchester and we're going to be doing a, a roughly six mile circular route along Chesil Beach uh, we'll be seeing an Iron Age hill fort, uh, a ruined abbey, a charming little chapel at the top of a hill and some other very interesting things along the way. So do join us. Now I mentioned that as you can see we're sitting on the beach, we're at Chesil Beach and I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. But it's a glorious sunny morning. It's uh, the last Sunday in May, bank holiday, so there'll be a few people floating around. It's been a miserable May weather-wise, one of the wettest on records, I believe. But the weather broke a couple of days ago, and I'm pleased to say it is absolutely brilliant at the moment. A few clouds, but a lot of blue sky. The sun's out. The temperature's predicted to be 20, 23 degrees later on, but there's a lovely breeze where we are at the moment. Right. Are we ready to go? Let's go. Well, I've parked my car at the uh, Abbotsbury Bullers Way car park. It's uh, just to the south of Abbotsbury on Chesil Beach. Uh, it looks as though you pay uh, a pound per hour, but I'll put the details up on screen. So we're going to start off our walk having a look along Chesil Beach itself. Well, Chesil Beach is a quite extraordinary phenomenon, really. It's 18 miles long and it's a shingle barrier from the West Bay to Portland. It's 50 foot high at its highest and 660 foot wide at its widest. And there's the Fleet Lagoon on the northern side which is two metres deep on average but its deepest part is about five metres. And no one really is sure of the origin or how the beach uh, formed, although there are many theories. But the good news is that dogs are allowed on the beach all year round. We certainly had some fun on the <laughs> Chesil Beach there. We um, could only go so far along the beach, so it's at certain times of the year uh, part of it is blocked off. Now I did come here uh, earlier on in the year and walked a little bit further along and if you're interested in World War II pillboxes there's a lot to see uh, towards the um, eastern end of, of the beach uh, from here. Uh, I came across uh, a Vickers machine gun emplacement or the certainly the foundations of one and a very impressive row of tank barriers which was uh, in very good condition and I think I also saw a type 26 pillbox as well but we will be seeing some uh, other pillboxes along the route anyway right well our next destination is St Catherine's Chapel which is right at the top of the hill so we've got a little bit of climbing to do. Just stop for a little breather halfway up the hill just to uh, admire the view and even from here we get a really good idea of the enormity of Chesil Beach. 
It really is quite magnificent. And if I just uh, show you panning around, actually from here, we can see in the very far distance the, um, that row of tank traps that I was talking about earlier from the Second World War. And you can understand why. I mean, it would have been uh, an ideal landing ground for the Germans. And indeed, right in front of me here, perched on the side of the hill, is uh, the remains of a, a pillbox that uh, would have been certainly well hidden and camouflaged. And I'll just uh, pan around, see where I've come from. The, uh, that hill in the far distance on the other side, there's some evidence of the old medieval farming system of uh, strips of terraces that they, they used to have. And then I've just passed this poor little tree that's definitely had a bad hair day, but you can certainly get an idea of the prevailing wind from around here. And then just panning around again, this is looking north. The top of that ridge there is where we'll eventually be coming back on the, uh, on the homeward leg. Well, another pit stop for a breather. Just slightly clouded over, which is quite nice actually, just cooling us down a bit. But just to show you another little uh, viewing area. So this is the uh, Western Lagoon in front of me and you can probably just about make out the swannery that's here. Uh, you can visit it, um, they don't allow dogs though. And uh, well, the swannery's been here for many, many centuries. Um, it used to provide meat for the uh, abbey in Abbotsbury, but more of that later. And then just in front, you can make out a maze which was built in 2008 or made in 2008 out of willow and it's supposed to look like a, a swan and then just down in front of me here another pillbox nestled beneath the hill okay right we've got our final uphill bit to do made it to the top and this is St Catherine's Chapel built in around 1400 once part of the Benedictine Abbey of Abbotsbury down uh, in the village below it survived the dissolution of monasteries in 1539 as it was useful as a watchtower and landmark for shipping built of local golden buff limestone it did have a navigation light in the turret in the past. Wow, should we go inside and have a look? Okay, let's uh, see what we can actually see in here. There are no lights, so it might be a bit dark and <laughs> a little bit echoey as well. I say it, um, it's only 41 foot long and about 15 foot wide. Look at this beautiful curved vault ceiling which uh, I think was restored in the 1980s and, uh, ah. and I guess this must be the door to the tower and then just panning around this is the south door here well, St. Catherine was the patron saint of spinsters and her feast day is the 25th of November when uh, unmarried women would come here and pray for a husband and they would uh, recite the poem, a husband St. Catherine, a handsome one St. Catherine, a rich one St. Catherine, a nice one St. Catherine and soon St. Catherine. And in the south doorway, if they put their knee in one of the wishing holes and hands in the other two holes and make a wish, then, well, who knows? What a fascinating little chapel. Okay, well, we are now going to start heading back or down into the valley to have a look at Abbotsbury itself. Quite a good view from, from up here. 
So we're going to go down this path and there's the church, the ruins of the abbey, the tithe barn, there's lots to see and then once we've been through the village we'll be heading up right on top of that uh, ridge there, the South Dorset Ridgeway and we'll be heading a lot across the top and then uh, eventually we'll be getting to an Iron Age hill fort at some stage over in the far distance there. made our way down off the hill and there's about three things I want to look at in Abbotsbury before we start a second ascent on the other side. So we're kind of double back a little bit and we'll be coming in uh, to the village from the south just by this delightful little stream that uh, either it's rolling off the hills or I think it's fed by a, a little uh, spring um, just further along and obviously it goes out into the lagoon, but uh, isn't that quite delightful? And quite, uh, quite clear, quite sort of chalk streamy as well. Well, the first thing I want to show you is this rather magnificent tithe barn and uh, pond in front of it. And the tithe barn was left intact from uh, the abbey, which I'll tell you about uh, shortly. Um, and basically the tithe was a tenth of income from uh, the eight local manors went to the church, basically crops, and they, they were stored in here. It was built around about 1400. It's 272 foot long and 31 foot wide, although only half of it appears to be roofed. The other half looks a bit ruined. And it's thought to be the largest or certainly longest thatched tithe barn in the world. It's now a children's attraction and the pond which was the abbey fish pond supplying fish for food I think actually that is just to the right of it and uh, the water in front here might have had something to do with a, a mill that um, was just down the road but uh, that's an impressive building and famous as being a filming location for the 1967 film Far From the Madding Crowd with of course Julie Christie. I think they, um, they filmed the wedding dance here. Now the second thing to look at is the abbey, although there's not much of it left. There was possibly a wooden church on the site from about 410 AD dedicated to St Peter but it was destroyed by Saxon raiders in the same century. And in the 11th century, King uh, Nut Steward Orc founded a Benedictine monastery on the site of the old church. It survived the problems of the Black Death in the 14th century and was often getting attacked from the sea. But the dissolution of monasteries in 1538 came and a few years later it was completely demolished. So all that there remains now is this little bit of wall and then just uh, slowly panning across. There's a church we'll have a look at in a minute. And then um, there's a bit of the gateway as well over there. And the last thing to look at, for us anyway, is uh, this church, St Nicholas Church. The earliest parts date to the 14th century. The west tower and north chancel was added in the, in the 15th century and then there were major restorations in 1807, 1885 and 1930. I think it's got six bells with the oldest possibly dated 1636. The stone carving on the uh, uh, western side uh, dates from the 
founding of the Abbey and it's a seated figure with a smaller figure between its knees and a dove in the left hand top corner. I believe it's uh, a symbol of the uh, Holy Trinity. And then the only other thing to look out for in the, uh, the porch on the uh, northern side there's an effigy of uh, an Abbey Abbot. Well we've made our way through Abbotsbury, lovely pretty little village stopped off at a pasty shop, pick up a pasty to have later on <laughs> and we've crossed the B3157 which I think is the road to Bridport. So we're now going to start making our way uphill onto a ridge. Just notice this couple here, I think the, the one on the right's completely lost their head though. Well, if you're going to be following this route, following my map at the start, this is uh, just a path to look out for coming through the village and a little place called the Spa House, little thatched um, roof, and just look out for the footpath sign alongside it. And that's the one that we need to follow. And as you can see, uh, well, we'll be heading to the hill fort, which is one and three quarter miles away. Well, we're halfway up towards the ridge. Good excuse to stop to have a look at the view. And again, good uh, vantage point of uh, St. Catherine's Chapel in the lagoon. And I see there's a little uh, um, sign here. It says we're on the Macmillan Way, which I hadn't heard about before. Apparently it's a 290 mile route from Boston in Lincolnshire, Lincolnshire to um, Abbotsbury to promote awareness and raise funds for Macmillan Cancer Relief. Well, we've made it to the top of the ridge and we've got some fantastic views from, from up here. And uh, a good place to stop and have our steak and ale pasty. Oh. Well, you can have all the crusty bits. Mmm, and um, very nice too. We're just going to stay here for a little bit longer and we'll catch up with you shortly. Well that pasty certainly filled a little hole. So we're now making our way westwards along the South Dorset Ridgeway. I know I keep on about it but the views here are quite stunning. I mean look at this little, uh, looks like a, a man-made pond down there. And I say, I don't know if this will come across on the GoPro because it is now getting quite hazy but there's Chesil Beach and it goes all the way along and I can just about make out the island um, Portland in the far distance. Well, I'm standing on top of a a burial mound barrow. There's quite a few along the ridge up here, plenty to choose from. And again, some terrific views. Quite windy though. Um, now, this is looking eastwards. It is, I say, hazy. I can just about make out on the horizon the Hardy Monument. And we've done a walk there in the past. So if you haven't seen that video, do, uh, do check it out. And here we are at Abbotsbury Castle, which is basically an Iron Age hill fort that was occupied by the uh, Duratrigues tribe. I'm never sure how you pronounce the name. And the Romans came and uh, took it over just before they went on to uh, take Maiden Castle near Dorchester to the east. But uh, I don't think the Romans stayed here for very long and uh, it was just abandoned after that. Right, there's some steps to, to climb, and I think there's a trig point at the top. Well, there's certainly some uh, impressive ditches and earthworks up here. And uh, <laughs> the good news now is that it's downhill all the way. Wow, look at that display of bluebells on the side. I know it's been a great year for bluebells everywhere and they're just about to go over but they're still a glorious colour nonetheless. 
and uh, it mixes in between. There's also little bits of red, I forget what that wildflower is called, but it really is such a beautiful time of year still to be coming for wildflowers. Continuing to head westwards, we've uh, crossed that B road again and we're now on uh, Tulks Hill, uh, very much um, heading towards uh, West Bexington, right by a uh, another World War II pillbox nestling into the side of the hill and what terrific views they would get from here. So there's West Bexington up down by Chesil Beach there which is where we'll be heading shortly and then our homeward leg will literally be along the, uh, the shoreline um, on um, Chesil Beach all the way back to our original starting point which is roughly over there somewhere. Well we're nearly as far west as we're going. I've just come across this. Uh, initially I thought it was something to do with the Second World War again but in fact I think it's the remains of an old lime kiln. Certainly if you look at uh, an old map of the area there was a lime kiln here and indeed I think the hill is called Lime Kiln. Uh, fairly deep as well. <laughs> Make sure Logan's all right, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this is where we're now going to drop right down onto the uh, beach to uh, West Bexington. We're making my way down into the little settlement of West Bexington. If you look on a map of around about 1900, all there was here was a, a farmhouse and just one other house, I believe. And then between the two world wars, a lot of the farmland was, that was considered no use for agriculture was sold uh, for development and so some houses were built and so uh, that's the origin of West Bexington. Well, we're now very much on the homeward leg, heading uh, eastwards on Chesil Beach, not far from the car park. But uh, always need to keep your eyes peeled for more of these World War II pillboxes. There's one here right on the beach and um, there was one further west from here that's um, almost completely been reclaimed by the shingle. And I also spotted another one that was uh, up, high up, uh, um, almost hidden uh, on, a, on a hill uh, but an excellent defensive position. Let's have a little look at this one here while we're, we're here because this is in excellent condition although a bit of graffiti. Looks like we can go inside. I guess it's going to get a little bit <laughs> dark and echoey in here and windy but uh, there we go that's the view looking out to sea. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We're back at Chesil Beach where we started. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do make a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. And do uh, check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We often put extra photographs and little bits of it, uh, news on that as well. We've had a super walk today. We've had a lot of fun on the beach, up on high ridges and the odd pasty or two along the way. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. <laughs> well done.